Hello everybody, this is my first Florida Drupal camp, so I'm excited to be here. Um, I'm here to talk about accessible JavaScript in action. A little bit about myself. Uh, my name is Andrew Olson, I go by Andy Olson, depends on how many Andrews we have on the team at the time. Uh, but I'm a front-end software engineer, uh, formerly a bounty, so I just changed jobs uh, and started uh, actually Monday this week, so what a great way to start a job, right? You get Friday off and you go to Florida, so. <laughs> That's just kind of how I roll. Um, I'm a front-end developer from the Chicago suburbs. I've been working with Drupal since 2008. I uh, joined a team and uh, they said they use Drupal and I thought I better figure out what the heck this thing is. And uh, since then, I've just been a front-ender on pretty much any CMS. My jam is, if it needs to be themed, I'm, I'm there for it. WordPress, Magento, custom, whatever. But I've really been focusing on Drupal for the past about five or six years or so. Um, so a fun fact about me, uh, I love music. I play music and I was lucky enough to play with a band at Lollapalooza. They're called Bang Camaro. They're out of Boston. They're a choir of 15 rock singers and I was one, I think they were probably 16 that day. Um, it was a lot of fun and they had, um, if you're familiar with uh, Peacemaker is an HBO Max, an HBO show, and anyway, one of their songs was featured in an episode, and it was really cool, so they're, they're coming back after all these years. It's really exciting and fun. If they tour again, I'll be part of that traveling choir, we'll see. It'll be fun. Also, more importantly, I am a member of the Alley Talk, so Carrie Fisher, uh, Marky, who's also unfortunately speaking at the same time, is a part of this. Uh, Amy June, I'm sure y'all have run across her. Um, and April Sides, they're all here. So any one of us, um, what we do, it's a monthly meetup and we talk about uh, accessibility things in the tech community. So we've been doing it, uh, I joined about a year and a half ago. Um, but Carrie and Donna Bungard, uh, I believe, started it. A few, a few of them started and were nice enough to ask us to join and kind of keep it going along. But we have these really cool stickers that are going to be coming soon. So if you want to join us and be part of the Alley Cat, uh, all of our funds are not just to pay for us. It's to pay for the accessibility things that we do. And we want to be able to pay our speakers as well. So we do important things like live captioning during our events. And we have a human captioner. And we have a website and all these kind of things. So we're looking to you know, have people support us. If you're interested in all things uh, accessibility, you can watch our YouTube channel. It's a really great resource. We have really great conversations. We're always looking for new speakers uh, as well. So consider, and this is just a sneak peek of maybe some stickers that are coming your way. So what we're here to talk about is JavaScript uh, in action, accessible JavaScript. So things that are interesting to me, things that I've run across are modals, also called pop-ups, also called pop-ins. Uh, I love anything with a menu. I've done navigation and menu. I've done a few of them. I've done a few of them horribly. And uh, I'm always willing to take on a new one and make it that much better. Type ahead, also autocomplete. So that's something that we'll get to near the end. And then we'll just wrap up and see what questions you have. If you have questions as I go, it'd be great to just um, feel free to ask me. I'll repeat it for the recording and we'll just kind of go for it in context, okay? But most importantly, this is how I like to start this. Um, on the screen, what you'll see is uh, Pearls Before Swine. If you don't know this comic, I adore this comic. It's about a rat and a pig who are best friends. And the pig is just this sweet kind of misguided person. So that's just kind of the setup if you don't know this comic. But I'm gonna kind of go through the panels here. This is gonna set up the talk, I think, pretty well. This hit me as, after I submitted, I read this in the, the, the paper. And I was like, oh yes, this is, this is so mean. So, pig and rat, you know, they're best friends. They're, they're, they're trudging up the hill and it says, wise ass on the hill. So they get to the top of the hill, and there is a cartoon character of a wise ass. And Pig asks the wise ass, oh, great wise ass, I need help with a problem. And the wise ass says, what is it, my son? And Pig says, I tried something new, and I fail, and I quit. So I try something else new, and I fail, and I quit. And I try something else new, and I fail, and I fail, and fail. So in the next panel, the wise ass says, so 
You try something only once, you naturally fail. And you immediately quit and try something new. Don't you think the problem is rather obvious? And Pig shouts at the top of his lungs, trying is the root of all failure. And in the last panel, uh, Pig is talking to his best friend, Rat, and says, then he cried and jumped off the mountain. We can what happened. So in this case, y'all can tell is, I feel a lot like Pig, where you know, I try, I try, and then I'm just very misguided and saying, well, just why even try? Accessibility can be challenging at times. Uh, the context can be really hard to put yourself into, but while I relate really hard to Pig, you know, I will always go up to the top of the hill and just keep trying and keep trying and learning. So welcome on this journey. Uh, the other thing about Pig here is, um, as I was going through this, I noticed that Pig is rather nude. And so I thought for this presentation, I thought we should clothe Pig. So when we're talking about models and pop-ups, this is a site. I'm sorry if somebody here works for Threadless. By no means am I picking apart uh, things about Threadless. What the goal of this to go through with the Threadless site is really, I want to tell a story about the arc of a marketing program. And then what we're going to do is go through that entire thing of how you might experience a mobile on the web today. And we're going to go back through it and experience it a few different ways as other users of the web might experience it. So what we're going to do today is we're going to look for a t-shirt to put on pig. Okay, so here we are. We go to Threadless. It's wonderful. But after about three seconds, imagine this. You all have been shopping on the web. A pop-up comes, right? About three seconds delay, it pops into the page, and, and on the screen it says, Threadless, spin to win. Win up to 20% off your order. And I say, no, click to dismiss. Let's keep shopping. I just, I don't even know if I like these t-shirts. This is my first time at this website. I don't even know, you know, what this site has. So I'm going to keep on going. So I go and I click on themes in the top navigation, and then all of a sudden I'm like, wait a second, something seems kind of familiar on this page. Does anybody here see it on the screen? It's kind of hard to see, it's kind of subtle. Spin to win, in the bottom left, exactly. So, aha, spin to win, I dismissed it, but they're subtly trying to get me to come back to it. And I took a look at some themes and I'm like, okay, I think these shirts are pretty cool, Pig's probably gonna like this, right? So, you got me, I want a discount. So, I go ahead and click on the giant spin, and voila. 20% off, not that bad, right? So, okay, they need an email, that makes sense. If I wanna get this discount, I probably gotta give them a little bit of info. So, oh, I filled it out and I'm still in the same modal, but now I need to give you my phone number. Uh, give them a little more information, but I really want these shirts, right? They're pretty cool, so fine, mark it away to me. Let's just keep on going. But if you'll notice that the flow is, it was there, it's back. You know, I'm still in that same modal. I gotta be done by now, right? No, okay. Well, I hit submit and my phone beeped and booped. So now what do I do? I pick up my phone because it beeps and boops at me. That's what they do. So I pick that up, uh, I check it out. So that's what it says. Um, I skim through it, I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, here's a bit.ly link, sure. Yeah, I just click on it and I go here. I see my number, that's great. I live dangerously because just random people text me and I click on links, right? <laughs> but I kind of expect it. So let's go on to the next part. All right. So I go back to that home page. I got what I needed. There's no more spin to win. So anytime I go back to this page, I don't spin to win. So that's kind of an arc of how I got a 20% discount. So now let's stop and rewind. Let's go back through that flow again, but now let's just say I can only use a keyboard to navigate the site. So now when we go back, here I am, and after a three second delay, you know, it pops into there. But what's pretty cool is JavaScript kind of helps us out. Right in this modal, it focuses on clothes. So it makes it pretty easy for me to, like it's interrupting me, but I can uh, either hit the escape key or I can click on this um, because uh, it's already in focus because I'm a keyboard user. And then if I tab, 
Um, I only go to that spin to win. I just have two choices, and I just stay inside of there until I dismiss it. All the things underneath it are kind of hidden. So that's kind of helpful as a screen reader. You know, that's that's a pretty good. If you're going to interrupt me as a, as a keyboard person, imagine if. I tabbed and I fell out of it, and all this stuff is still in my way, and I have no way to kind of get rid of that. So, this is about JavaScript, right? You probably want to see something interesting. So, uh, in some some uh, some JavaScript. Well, the great news about this, I work with this awesome person, or at my previous company, Bounteous. His name is Steve Woodson, and he has this really cool website called Accessibility Solutions, and um, so what I want to do is go to that website and show you, uh, and I'll make these slides available afterward, but let's go to his site and kind of see what, how that modal kind of works. So when you go out to his website, he has these interesting scenarios and code examples of you know, what, what's good and what's bad in the code of the differences to make it a little bit more accessible and better. So here's the before example of a modal. So if I click on this modal, let's go ahead and expand this. So when I click on the modal, um, I click, I'm tabbing to the modal in the close, and then now I'm tabbing. You notice I didn't go back into it, so I'm gonna shift tab and go back. But basically, um, yeah, so there it is. So as soon as I tab, I'm outside of that modal, and now I'm in the page going to other tab focusable items, which are links, buttons, inputs, whatever. So that's not cool, right? Because if I'm going to interrupt you, I need to stay in that context and have an easy way to um, dismiss it. So he has this really cool afterward. And so this is what we saw in that, uh, that threadless example, right? Is I'm just hitting the tab key forward, back, forward, back. Um, and I only have two choices. So I, it's easy to dismiss. So it's kind of hard to see on this screen, I apologize. Uh, but what's really cool is he provides the HTML, the styles, and then the JavaScript. So hopefully you can see here, really important thing of what he does is that um, we have a prior focus. So what he does is document.querySelector, uh, oh, he has a, sorry, a modal label as well. But um, it's really hard for me to see. Oh, there it is, prior focus, right? So prior focus. What we're going to do is what we're, we're going to do is as I click that button to open that modal, I'm going to store that prior focus so that way when I'm done with that modal, I can go back to the prior focus. That's a WCAG criteria. Okay, so that's a pretty cool way to do that. Now in our case, it, prior focus isn't really a thing because I've just interrupted the user, right? But it should still remember if I was quickly in the three seconds of loading, tabbing through something, it'll still remember what I was last focused on. Okay. And then um, this is the really interesting part. I was actually talking to Ofer about this a little bit earlier. So what we want to do is we want to find all the focusable elements inside of that modal. And so it's kind of a laundry list of all things that are focusable. So an A graph, an area, an input, a select, text area, a button. So what we do is we just grab all of those things and throw them in an array. And then in this line down here, we have a first tab stop, which is the first part of the array, and then we get the last tab stop, which is minus one. So it's pretty cool, right? So there's some interesting JavaScript that you can use, and then now let's look at some of the tab uh, elements. So what we're doing is we're tabbing through that array, going to the first, and then going back to the last, and that way we just stay in that context. So I won't go all the way through it. And then also, escape key is just a get out of jail free card, as I just go back to whatever was focusable. OK, so highly encourage you to check out the site. Just, just code here, play around with it, try and understand it. I've used this as a starting point for some menus that I've built. Um, not necessarily modals, but there's times when I want to keep a focusable, I want to keep the user in this area because I've taken over the screen. I've done something interesting, like a modal or a pushover mobile menu, and I want to keep them inside of there until they close it. Or escape causes that menu to just push back. So I found this really good nugget of um, being able to find all those focusable elements and go through it. Is there any questions about that? 
Yeah. Kind of related, um, what's your opinion on the dialogue element? Do you think it's ready for accessibility yet? I know that that was a big a hindrance with it that it was not quite there, but I've heard it is getting closer. So would that be something, once that's there, to kind of replace this? Interesting. I have not looked at uh, dialogue. That's a great question. Um, I don't know the status of that. The next example of what I'm going to go through is actually the ARIA modal part of it. So that's kind of what I focus on here. But I don't know uh, where we are with dialogue. That would be great. You know, modals and dialogues are part of the web. And there is, um, there is work to just make that a, a regular web thing. So great question. Yes? Uh, what is your thought about instead of last item trap you in, that the next tab would actually close the model? Is that a good practice? I don't know if tab, um, tab typically doesn't close or do things. Tab really goes next. Mm -hmm. Escape is for close. Tab is to get you to something to make a decision. So by saying the next tab is to close, it's kind of you're making a decision for the user. Is kind of how I would see it. So I don't know if that makes sense to. Yeah, the process is more like they, I guess in my, in my uh, example, the tab was the one that like allowed it also opening it, then it goes through the options, and then tabbing through just kind of let you continue as opposed to keep you there. Well, let's just say that when I opened it up, I wasn't sure how many options. So I open it up and I go one, two, what? It closed. So if I don't set the context of it, so that would be, as long as you're probably setting it up and letting them know you've done five elements, you're going along, okay, when I get to the fifth, um, I think the expectation is you, you just go back to the top, which again, the first focus is to close, so that makes sense that you're back at the beginning. So does that make? Yeah. So I would say probably no, but again, context is everything. If that does make sense to, to do that, to move on to the next, to move on to the next, but just know you're making a decision for the user, and we should probably just let the user know that. Okay, uh, again, thanks, Steve. Uh, you did a wonderful job, um, and I love your website because it inspires me to write code for when I need something in context. Don't worry, I'll, I'll let Steve know that I use his likeness. <laughs> and by the way, this picture of Steve, that is Steve. He loves coffee. He is that goofy fun, such a nice, uh, funny person to work with. So can't say enough about Steve. All right, so rewind. Let's go through that flow, but as a user that uses a screen reader. And I'm going to do my best to use VoiceOver on Mac, but it gets a little funny because I'm doing a lot of things with a lot of different windows. But um, let's give it a try. But before I do that, I want to kind of um, give you a pro tip. So. As I said, I changed jobs recently, so I have a my own computer here that wasn't quite set up for all this, so I was doing new user things on this computer while I shipped my other computer back. Uh, I had a lot of this presentation on it. That's another story. Um, timing is everything, right? Uh, so for this, when you go into Safari, unfortunately, by default, Safari on a Mac, again, VoiceOver is a Mac OS only thing, um, you've got to go to the Safari preferences, click on Advanced, and then I like this setting that says press tab to highlight each item on a web page because otherwise, if you don't, it doesn't pick up the links. So if you're used to tab navigating through things, you know, it goes to, <coughs> if you don't check that, it'll only go to like inputs and buttons, I believe, and maybe some other things. But if you check that, it'll go to links on the page as well, which I like because that's an actionable thing as a keyboard, sometimes keyboard user. I like that. And the other thing is, is I kept trying to inspect to look at the HTML when I was using it. And uh, you have to check to show like developer tools to inspect things. So there you go. That's pro tip for that. The last thing I'll say is voiceover shortcuts. Uh, DQ has a great um, shortcut reference right there. So follow that link. It's wonderful. But um, Aubrey's question was great about dialogue, like having a natural dialogue. But in this case, if we look a little closer at Threadless, peek under the under the hood here, they're using ARIA modal true. So um, if we look at that, so what is the ARIA modal? So this is a great resource. Again, um, if you go to this link, uh, we'll just take a quick look at it, but um, this gives you really good examples 
of ARIA and like how to build a good accessible modal. So let's do that. Make sure I have the right one. Yeah, and again, it's great. It has a code pen. Um, this is just the example. So once again, it's a modal. I went through it, it focused on the first input there. I can go through and I'm just hitting tab and going through it. Right, and I can hit escape and get out of it. But what's great is just talking about the different keyboard support that this modal has. Again, tab to go forward, shift tab to go backward, escape to get out of it, um, and all the things that you can consider. And it gives you HTML source. They give the disclaimer, this is not intended for production, but as always, it's just a really good starter, a starting point for you. Um, so I found that really, really helpful. Um, I think what I want to do is turn on voiceover and let's give that a try. Yeah. So this is going to be a little bit of uh, an adventure. But if you're all, we're all friends here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up a vanilla, just Safari, a cleared cache and everything. And what I want to do is, the goal here is we're going to try and buy Pig that t-shirt, but we're going to do it via voiceover. So uh, I'm going to turn voiceover on. And if you can close your eyes or if you want to watch as you go along, but this is how we're going to experience how Threadless, what Threadless does. Voiceover on Safari. Start A T T P. You are slash slash. Unselected. So W W. W W W. Dub 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 slash. W dub slash. Disney period. Unselected. H H H H dot com. Shop graphic design T-shirts and apparel. Ninety percent, fifty percent loaded. Sign up via text for offers. Frame. You are currently on a scroll area inside of web content. To begin interacting with the contents of this scroll area, press Control, Option, Shift, Down Arrow. To exit this web area, press Control, Option, Shift, Up Arrow. I'm gonna just hit Tab. Sign up via text for offers. Threadless web dialog entering. Sign up via text for offers. Spin button. Close. Spin. But close. Spin button. You are currently on a button. To click this button, press Control, Option, Space. Heading level, sign up via text for offers, frame. You are currently on a frame. Sign up via text, continue, no, close, but email app, continue, no, thanks, button. You are currently in web content, link. Thread, search threadless, search the artist marketplace. Search text field. Search all threadless products, search all threadless products. Group, authenticate, Safari, shop graphic design tee, shirts and a voiceover off. What did you think? It didn't, tell, it didn't tell you what the discount was. Oh. It that's true, it didn't announce, so that's a great room for improvement, right? Maybe, Sorry. The, no, the context, uh, I did ask, like, what, what did you all think? So I spun to win, it, it refreshed that page, but it would have been nice to maybe have, like, a, a ARIA Live announce to say that I got 20%. I would have had to have used the other arrows to consume that information. So, and I'm using shortcuts from DQ, but it's very easy to turn it, turn it on. I was just using tab to just go to the focusable areas, but I could use the arrow to have it read off, there's other shortcuts to read it off, but um, yeah. So let's go back to the slides. So kind of interesting experiencing the same same coupon modal disruption these different ways as a keyboard, as a uh, screen reader. So, you know, on the screen uh, I have a picture of Compassion led us here, but really marketing led us here, right? <laughs> so as developers, as Drupal developers, as people that care about other people and, and, and accessibility, we want everybody to be able to get that discount, right? To be able to consume this information. But we really need to work together to meet marketing goals because uh, I worked on a project where we actually did include these coupons and it did increase and it had real revenue impact, which is great because they, you know, send us checks, so that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. uh, but also analytics, we were able to look to see what was working, what wasn't working. Um, we can get really deep into like offers and personalization and personalization offers. And then it would be really great, so I built this, I, I presented this, but I would love to take context of implementing a modal with a coupon or a 20% off with a real user 
uh, of all different types of user, you know, a uh, user that experiences the web with both hands and eyes, right, uh, keyboard. So getting that input is really going to just help you iterate and improve upon it. So when I worked with the client to build this, we really, over time, kind of came up with these kind of choices, and I just want to present them to you. These are good questions to ask. So in the Drupal admin, <coughs> we gave the marketer a chance to say, select a time to pop in. The five seconds we determined was, was fine, but some pages had maybe some video options that they had um, in there that they wanted them to kind of experience the page and then have it pop up so they could you know, interrupt the user uh, they have the chance to do that setting. Um, the other thing is uh, we use cookies, and I know GDRP, right, cookies, if you say no to cookies, we probably shouldn't be doing this, right? So there's also, uh, I'm a big fan of local storage, and some of the ARIA examples, too, uh, show really interesting ways to just shove things into local storage to remember. Because uh, as you recall, when we're on that home page, it said spin to win, and then on the next page, it was it knew not to interrupt me with spin to win. It knew to just have this button down below. And in our project, we use cookies. And in our project, we bothered the user, and then when we dismissed it, we didn't want to bother them and exhaust them all the time. Because <coughs> everybody, you just keep asking for the coupons, people are going to leave. And analytics, working with the analytics team, helps tell us that. What was inside of that modal, we left as like a black box. So it was Salesforce form sometimes, coupon generators. We built this so it was really flexible. They could put whatever they want to in there, whatever marketing message. Um, so uh, we had it by displaying by URL path. So the client that uh, I worked with uh, had different sports. So like football, basketball, golf, you know, golf, <laughs> people that are in golf might want to give different discounts. During football, Super Bowl, during basketball, March Madness. So each one could have its own kind of um, way of, of marketing the people. <clears throat> Special URLs. So we had a regex for the win there. So we were able to kind of look at that URL and determine you know, where they came from and, and if we could show different content at that time. Really interesting. Select locale, we were multilingual. So I uh, wanted to, to have the right message translated and shown. Um, and also hide on mobile viewports. So if you notice, uh, so then I went to my phone and I was like, well, let me just type in threadless.com on my phone after clicking to get that coupon. And spin the win seems like it's only something for the desktop or, as I say on here, somebody's profile personalized and tracked me so well that they already knew that I had a discount. And I was just visiting again on my phone and then I look at and that probably 2001 Space Odyssey, you know, whatever. So I'm just being tracked on that. So, um, what are ways that we don't have to disrupt the user? One person that I didn't really cover here, but I think we can all understand is, and we've all experienced it, is the cognitive load. So, um, you know, what are ways that we don't have to just like shout, spin to win, get this discount, get this discount, sign up for my newsletter, oh my gosh, I need your info, right? So, here's just some alternatives. Uh, it's another website that at the bottom, they're very clear about when you subscribe, you're going to get 10%. Because everybody has to subscribe on there, but this, I thought, did a good job of like saying, hey, we'll give you a discount um, and do that. Uh, consistent graphic at the top. So we went to this website, and that's at the top. Sadly, it doesn't have all the text, um, which is no, no, no. But uh, I thought it was good to just kind of be very clear on your homepage about what to do. And then, you know, uh, Wilson uh, worked on that project in a previous life, and just we had this really interesting way to inject ads in context. So as you're shopping, in this case, it's just, um, you know, it has something to do with basketball, but, you know, there's different ways to inject it and not just shout or modal and, and get that attention and potentially annoy people or disrupt their shopping experience. So, we are at 133, very deep in modals. I was very ambitious with this talk, trying to cover three things, all right? Um, as you can tell, modals is a lot, and I wanted to wear those different hats and give you context. Um, we'll go through uh, menus, but I'm just gonna skip ahead to, uh, we'll do a live demo, 
uh, that is my cat. So, um, but I want to just get to the type ahead. So type ahead, you're going to just have to wait for it. I did not get to that because this other stuff was um, a lot to put together. But um, for type ahead, uh, I'll just go to this and then we'll end with, with menus. Does that sound okay? So for type ahead, um, it was really uh, just trying to tap into what we have as Drupalists. We have Drupal Announce, which as the context of the screen changes, we have a way to announce that to the user using ARIA Live, which is really exciting. It's just built into Drupal. You get it for free. Um, the hard part was when I went out to like find real real world and, and real examples, there's not a whole lot, which is kind of the point of this talk is I wanted to take that to another level and, and bring that to it. Didn't quite get there yet. But where uh, I first understood about RLI and uh, type in and announce was this really great um, Nashville session by Everett Zufeld. Uh, he is a blind individual that um, for his presentation, we talked about how he actually got to Nashville and how he booked a flight. Uh, it was really interesting watching him experience the web. Um, and again, that really helped me understand, as somebody that builds something, how you affect people every day that need to come to conferences and share amazing information. So, um, and uh, are you live? Again, Steve Woodson for the win. He has this really great code out there. It's really fun. You can go out there and experience. He has some really good uh, ARIA Live examples. They're not the Drupal Announce uh, examples, but really it's kind of the same thing. And I also found this article, which I thought was really interesting. Um, it's by Jules Kong. I don't know her or the company, but this was uh, uh, as good as I could find about how to put uh, Drupal Announce and how to experience Drupal mm -hmm. Announce in ARIA Live. I thought it was really good. Any questions about type ahead and um, Drupal Announce? Some really good links, though. You're going to leave with, with some good stuff, and hopefully I'll add on to this and or break it up. Let's go back to menus. So, uh, and I'll just go for another, I'll try and just in five minutes touch on a few things about menus, and then um, we'll see if there's time for questions. But. I'm a co-maintainer of TV Mega Menu at Bounteous. There's uh, quite a few developers that have taken on this, this Mega Menu, and it's really pretty cool. It um, allows you to, to use Drupal menus and then put other things inside of it, like blocks. Um, and uh, we have keyboard navigation uh, support for it. So what I'm going to do now is, again, Thanks, Mikan, for the live demo. He's not very helpful most days. Um, but I'm going to go to actually the example that we have listed on the TV Mega Menu page as a good example of in production. So as we go to uh, Holly Hunt, it's a, a customer that's on Drupal using the TV Mega Menu. So as I hover over new, I get a Mega Menu in the first column, you know, a bunch of links. Uh, and then two like image blocks, right? So what's really interesting about this is experiencing this as a keyboard user. So now I'm in a tab, so I'm on the logo. And as I go in, as soon as I tab to the first item, new on focus opens up. So back to Ofer's uh, example, as I'm making a decision for them, is that as I focus, I want to see everything in, inside of there. If I tab again, I don't go inside of it and I don't have to go through all of those links then to get to furniture. If I tab, I go across. And what's cool too is that not only tab or shift tab, I'm going back and forth, but I can also use the left and right arrows. So if I left, right, 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 left, I'm going across the top, I'm just skimming. Again, I'm, I'm keyboard user, but I'm also sighted. So I can kind of visually see what's going on, just use the keyboard. If I hit the down arrow, I'm now saying I want to go inside of this menu, okay? And so now I'm on so first level, now I'm on second level. And if, um, if I hit the right arrow, I go to tables. I can go across these columns. If I want to go to that third level of nav, I hit the down arrow again, 
and now I can just go through. If I keep hitting down, I'm going to get through this whole thing. Or if I hit sh tab, I'll go through this whole thing. Or I can go to arrow, and then if I hit, so I'm at the very end of the line, right? I'm going through column, 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 block. I'm at the very last link inside of this. And then if I hit the right arrow, um, I'm back on furniture up top. You don't, the focus, the visual focus isn't the best, but now if I hit right again, I'll go to lighting. But um, it got to the end and it said, all right, you're back at that beginning. If I hit escape at any moment, it's get out of jail free. So if I uh, then just hit tab and go through it. But that's kind of how we built this menu. Uh, again, if you just set up a menu in Drupal that has three levels, you use our module. Um, we probably need some help with some of the doc documentation on it, but if you have any questions, you know, uh, we're happy to answer it. But I'm pretty happy with how the keyboard support worked on um, the site. So uh, any questions about kind of the keyboard nav and menus? All right, I'm gonna give you one more, and this, will, this won't surprise you in the least, not this one. This, uh, once again, we're on this ARIA site that has wonderful examples. So there's a navigation menu bar example. Again, not production ready, but again, you can get some really good inspiration here. And it talks through what we just went through is like how space enter, right arrow, left arrow. So these are patterns recommended and established by experts um, to kind of help you move through menus and submenus. Um, so as I was going through this, I thought this was interesting, so now I'm gonna use my keyboard again. So I'm gonna tab, I'm on home, tab, oh. See, so there you go. So I'm on home, tab. When I tab, I go out of the menu. <coughs> they're making it, they're saying, hey, you wanna move on. So now I have to go to my right arrow. So right, 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 right. I go back through. So tab no longer works once I'm in there. So, so if I go right arrow, now I go down arrow. And if I hit escape, it closes it. So I'm gonna go down again, down, down. I'm gonna open up that third level. So I'm gonna hit the right arrow. And now if I hit escape, it focuses me back to, to there. If I hit escape again, I'm closed. So you can kind of see a really interesting way. And if I just keep hitting the down arrow, I, I'm keyboard trapped inside of this until that next one. So um, again, really great resources. As you build menus, as you build modals, as you build um, anything, you know, really understand the context. It's really helpful to get these examples and then apply it to the things that you're building. So hopefully you saw a little bit of JavaScript, but I think the main takeaway here is as we build JavaScript, as we build solutions, we really need to kind of verify that with our users, um, find some really good patterns, and just keep asking ourselves that question, where are those different hats of all those different users as we go through it? Um, any, any questions? Uh, I think, yeah. Steve. That's it. So, thanks so much.